Hey, it's Alejandro Duarte from Vadin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare or compile or build your application for production. Right, uh, so I'm going to create a new project here, start.vadin.com, and I'm going to leave it as is, or actually, let's change this to production mode just for fun. I just need something to play with, right? So it's creating the uh, zip file with the Maven project in it. Let's unpackage that and you know what only f also for fun i'm going to use the uh the terminal this time we're not going to use an id just for fun let me put this a bit bigger oh maybe it's uh, too big the window now all right that's good so if we take a look at the files that are by default in the in the in the project we see we see these things so let's go through them license well it's a license of your software, you should change it to whatever you want. And uh, then you have a readme, again, it has some um, instructions for you when you create a project, like for example, how to import it into IntelliJ IDEA or Eclipse or NetBeans, I think. Well, only those two. Uh, and uh, how to run the application. So from the command line, you have to use Maven and then go there and these kind of things, okay? So that's the uh, readme. You should, of course, change it as you develop the, the application to kind of uh, give instructions on, on your own software uh, to other developers and even yourself. Anyway, now we have two uh, directories. One is front-end source and the other one is source. Uh, this is where you put uh, most likely uh, Java classes. So all the code if you are using, for example, of adding flow and you put all the the front end uh, classes there that build uh, that forms the, the that form the UI. And here you put uh, resources such as JavaScript and CSS. Or if you are using a Latin Fusion, then you have your templates there as well. All right. You have of course the pom.xml file. And this is where um, all the um, Java dependencies are um, kind of declared. So here we have some of the uh, dependencies, right? So we can see that this is um, a Spring Boot uh, application. And then we have a build section. And by the way, there's a default goal here, which is Spring Boot run. That's the reason we only have to specify Maven and we can omit this part. If you are not using Spring, then uh, maybe this is going to be something like Jetty, Jetty run uh, or similar. So um, back to the files, and that's the pom.xml. Then we have package.json and package.lock.json. These are kind of the equivalent in a way to, uh, to the, at least the dependencies section of the pom.xml file, but this is for Java, right? But these are for the client side uh, files, so JavaScript resources, mostly. So the web components that that are available in Vadin. So uh, what there are two, well, web, this is this is using uh, um, NPM and it requires, or it uses two files. So one is where you define like the, the um, minimal version of each of the components. So you see, of course, something like Vadin Grid. Uh, you should, should see the uh, text field button, all the things that you probably have used before but these are the minimal versions now this other file uh, one of the things that it or the most uh, imp or important or relevant thing uh, for us right now is that it uh, specifies the exact version uh, that it's going to be used to um, to build the project so you should check this in the uh, in your um, in git or or any uh, version control system that you are using Good. So I think that's what we have here by default. Now, um, by the way, these are um, these are um, generated by Vadin. If, if if you don't have them, I believe. Let's 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 try that. Package lock the JSON. It's gone as well. And if we follow the instructions in the readme, it said like you have to run the the application like that. Remember, it, this is a shortcut for Spring Boot Run because I showed you the default 
a goal that is specified in the pom.xml file. So let's run the project like that. Now let's suppose this is the server where we want to deploy, deploy our application, so production. Uh, maybe it wouldn't make much sense to use Maven there, right? To have even Maven installed in this machine. So this clearly is not ready for, for production at all. Um, we see uh, that's what we're going to see how to solve. It's actually very simple to, to do, but I want you to understand all the concepts behind it. Um, so it's downloading, well, download probably the Java dependencies, or maybe I had them already in the uh, in my local Maven repository. Now look, it's building the front end development uh, or, or the front end uh, bundle. It's called. Uh, it doesn't make sense, right? If it if this was production and now it's opening um, even a browser tab, I don't think I will have this in the production environment. Uh, so that's not what we need. And I'm going to show you something more here. Uh, let's reload and let's try to find something called bundle. And this is kind of uh, a file that contains all the uh, web components and JavaScript and, and CSS and things that are client side, kind of kind of on, in in one in one file, and um, you can see uh, uh, the size here. So fourteen point five megabytes. We are in development mode right now, so this is not really production yet. So how can we change that? Because if we uh, try to run this application in production. It's not gonna work. So first thing you might think is, well, you just um, compile the application or package the application. Let's take a look at what files there are here before we continue. So now you see there are more files. Also, particularly there is oh well the ones I told you it would generate, and then it creates also uh, the configuration for for Webpack, the tool that is used. Remember to create the bundle. Uh, you need to worry about those. They are managed by Vadim. Just like I showed you, they are generated by the framework. But th now we have our node modules. So what this has is all the web components. So we'll find there also uh, uh, all the kind of... Uh, you can think of these as the uh, like the effective POM, if you wish, of the... Uh, uh, of the client side, and there are the the Vadin. These are the directory inside this. There is the uh, the Vadin components, right? Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, no, well, we have um, target. So inside that directory, we have another three directory. So front end. Let's have a look at what's there. Front end. So we have uh, these things. Let's let's uh, actually inspect the. Uh, um, the contents. So you can see it's kind of importing um, JavaScript um, things from there. So yeah, uh, so let's continue. Um, we have, or actually, <laughs> I forgot one thing I wanted to show you as well. Uh, oh, I repeated the same <laughs> command. Uh, if we have a look at uh, target classes, this is where all the um, the Java compiled classes are, but if we go to meta inf, you will find this Vadin config, and there's this file, and look at it. It's somehow instructing um, uh, flow Vadin flow or Vadin to to use this location for, for example, front end thing. So that means if I change here in my project, this this is my development machine, right? So if I change that, then I'm going to see the changes here. For example, the CSS, if I change something, then it's going to be used. So it's using this, it's not using anything inside the target directory, right? So this is clearly not ready for production. And that's the reason it's not, it, it, it won't work. Uh, we need to change that. So. The way to do this is, if we inspect first the pom.xml file, then we'll see um, we'll see the profiles section after probably build, which is this. So profiles, we'll see one of the profiles that are 
there by default it's called production and this does a bunch of things so it configures things so for example these uh, it adds uh, these uh, dependency which is a small de dependency to to allow these uh, kind of production uh, build and uh, and configure some properties and and stuff right and it calls something called build uh, front end which is uh what creates this uh, bundle for production right now it's called production so the way we uh call that is by using the name right after this so it's called production and now what it's going to do is going to create a client side bundle that is not kind of uh, or, or, or and that configuration that it's not reading my development directory right the one that was inside users and all that no it's going to to read now uh, from the kind of the the package instead so relative to to the to the package so I can deploy that in a different machine it's just that I cannot now just change the the code but we don't need that because we are in production so so that's good and um, and well now we can run we can run the project if we have a look at the target directory we see there is a jar file we could have have could have uh, generated this jar file but it would still have the configuration that reads uh, my own directory and this one because we uh, use the production profile doesn't contain that um, um, that configuration remember it was in uh, classes and then meta inf in config and flow build info now we shouldn't have anything that it's pointing to my personal directory here in this computer and that's that's very good okay and uh, we can now um, run the application like this so this could be now the production server there we do need this we need Java we need the Java virtual machine that's going to start the Java virtual machine and then we pass in a, um, uh, a Java program in this case is the one in um, in the target directory so this is not going to do any development kind of thing everything is built everything is ready it doesn't open a new uh, tab or anything it, it doesn't show anything that it's like uh, for development so this is ready for, for production moreover the size of the bundle that I showed you before here let's see if I can find it here should be smaller I don't remember what was the size but it was in the megabytes thing now it's much smaller right so uh, that's another reason to to compile using the uh, production mode and uh, and um, yeah I think that's what I wanted to show you in this video let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos remember to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video